Today I'm talking about scoring a reed blank and beveling the edges so that I'll be ready to fold uh, the reed in half in order to make uh, a blank. The pieces that I need in order to do this are a tube, a metal tube, uh, it doesn't have to be metal, it can be wooden, but something that's, that's going to be uh, fairly soft, a soft metal. This one happens to be brass, it's a plumbing, a piece of plumbing. Uh, and I, it has to, it, it's soft so that when my knife slips off the end of the reed and, and intersects the, 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 the tube, it doesn't damage the end of the knife. Uh, you can use your reed knife if you want to do that. Uh, I, I prefer using a, a knife of some sort. Exacto knives work. Uh, I don't see my exacto knife here, uh, but uh, lots of things work. Uh, basically, I like to, when I score things, I like to have the reed uh, blank, uh, the piece of gouge tape and profiled cane on a tube so that it's held firmly. Uh, I like to measure how long I make my reeds. Uh, I, I use 7 eighths of an inch. Uh, that's about 20, a little over 22 millimeters. Uh, and I find that if I make it longer than that, my tubes get round, get rounder uh, on my blank. And if I make it shorter, they're wider. But 7 eighths seems to work well for me. So I'm using a, a kind of a funny knife, uh, but uh, it's a hobby knife, they're not very expensive, and I find that I have a lot of control on this. So I've marked my 7 eighths of an inch. Uh, you can see that, that in the past I've, I've made my 7 eighths of an inch marker on, on, the, on my tube here as well. Uh, sometimes I do that, sometimes I mark it on the cane. And, and so I, I start in the middle, and I make a score. And I just, I'm just trying to get through the bark. I'm not trying to do anything more than that. And then I try to put three on each side, the same length. And as evenly spaced as I can do it. What I like about this particular knife is it's easy to keep straight. It's easy to keep my cuts straight. And when I use a, an X-Acto knife or my reed knife, my cuts tend to be tend to be crooked. I don't know if you can see those or not, but anyway, I've got seven of them across there. One and again, I'm just doing that on on each end. And you can see I didn't mark this very well. But anyway, one in the middle. And three on each side. Okay, cool. Those look pretty good. I, I'm sure you can't see them at all. Okay, anyway, so what am I doing after this? I, I need to bevel the piece of cane. And the reason why I need to bevel the piece of cane is because if you look at the end, the it's been cut uh, on the shaper so that uh, the edges, the edges is not, well, it just goes straight down. And, and so when you form them together, when you roll this around, these two points are going to hit each other and it's not going to close very well. So the idea is to change this edge so that it now is perpendicular to the outside radius of the, uh, of the blank. So I'm going to make each of those sides that way. Uh, there are some people who get very fancy about this. I'm, I'm pretty simple about it. I just want to do it as, as easily as I can. So I just take my file. This happens to be a, a, a three-sided file. I have also done it using a flat file. Um, it doesn't really matter as far as I can tell. 
And so I like to do that. And so I just take my, my cane and I start, oh, say, five-eighths of an inch or so, five-eighths of an inch. What is that? I don't know. That's about 15 or so uh, millimeters. And so I just take it and I roll the cane as, as I push forward with this. And I just take a few cuts at it. And I look at the end. I don't know if you can see the end, but now that end is this piece, if I put it on here, goes in that direction. So it's pretty perpendicular to the edge. Okay, and then I do the same on the other side. I have to roll in the opposite direction, but I just take it and I go. And so I've now made this edge so that it's fairly perpendicular to the outside. Again, so what am I doing? I'm taking this and going. bit more than that. This file is dirty. Okay, I've got that side and then and then that side. Okay, so I've done both edges of that and basically this is now ready to be soaked and uh, formed after soaking. Okay, one of the other things that I'd like to do is when uh, my, uh, my reeds are gouged, when I get gouged cane, it's often not very smooth on the inside. And that does matter. Not, not particularly back here where, where the, the tube will be. That doesn't matter too much, but here where the blades are vibrating, it's really nice that they're smooth, particularly at the tip where uh, the pieces of cane, when, when it's folded over, if it's not smooth, then you get things like this, where the two pieces will meet like this, and, and they're not going to close evenly. So you want it so that it's flat, so that, so that things will be bumping together and, and forming a nice seal. So I've taken this same tube that I that I used before and I glued onto it a, a piece of fine sandpaper. I think this is either 320 or 400 uh, grade sandpaper. And then I just take my, my reed uh, blank and I just rub it on here a little bit. I like to take it and reverse directions just to see that I'm, I'm doing about the same thing. So I'm putting pressure on, on the blade part of the reed to hold it down and I'm pushing it back and forth. And now that is much smoother than it was before. Oh, I appear to have torn a little bit out of the corner right here. Anyway, so that's, that's much nicer. There are times when uh, when I've got a lot of time, and I'll take this and I'll wet it just with saliva, just to raise the 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 grain a little bit, and I'll let it set until it dries and do it again. So again, I'm just taking a, a, a piece of cane, I'm putting it on my on my sandpaper and rubbing. Reversing the direction. And rubbing that. And now it's much smoother and the blades will fit uh, together much, much more nicely when, when the reed is finally done. This one has not been has not been beveled. Okay, so that's it. Uh, more
more steps later.